Hi everyone, Paul ISM. Welcome to part 8 of our car modeling technique guide. So, um, today we're going to concentrate on polishing up the body. So we're going to use some micro mesh wet and dry to give it all a bit of a key back. Uh, we're going to use some polishing compounds, give it a good polish up and get a real nice shine out of that body. We had a good shine already out of the 2K, but giving it a bit of a flat and a polish will make it shine a lot more as well. Uh, we're also going to mask off the window rubber surrounds on the outside. I know a lot of people have asked about this and struggled a bit, so hopefully I can make it a bit clearer on how I do it. Uh, and then I'll show spraying them as well. And then we're going to use the kit supplied interior mask set and mask off all the interior glass today as well. And I'll show spraying that uh, as well. That then leads on to part nine, which I'm hoping will be the last part of the actual build. Um, we've got the lights to do, we've got the glue and the glass in place, glue and the spoiler and the roof scoop in place, uh, we've got the mesh to pop on. Uh, bonnet pins to paint, and they feel a little bit like antennas to put on, uh, and so on and so forth. But we're very nearly there, and it's absolutely fantastic. Thanks for all the support, everyone that's watched it. The feedback's been absolutely amazing, and I really do appreciate everyone's giving me feedback. And it looks to be helping a lot of people, which is great as well, because that's what these videos are for. So thanks to everybody. As always, if you got any comments or questions, pop in the chat, and I'll try and answer them to the best of my ability. Anything you're confused of, please ask. And there we go. So let's go over and let's get started and get this done today. Okay, so this is where we're at. Um, interior is all done from the last two parts we've done. And the exterior is all uh, clear coated from when we clear coated it in part, was it three or four? Part four, I believe it was. So our roof scoop and spoiler are still loose. The 2K finish we got out of the airbrush was pretty damn good. And I'll be honest, you could probably leave it if you wish to. But I know we can improve on this slightly. We've got ever so slight orange peel in a few places, and we've got a few specks of dust, uh, which I'll point out for you in a second. But overall, it's a good finish, and I'd certainly be happy to leave it like that, um, should I wish to. We've got a nice even shine all over, just a couple of specks of dust. Uh, but like I said, there's a slight bit of orange peel in a couple of places. But we've got a little bit of dust on that scoop there, as you can see, and a little bit of dust on the roof just at the back. And other than that, we're pretty clean. Uh, wetting the surface, keeping your work area clean and clear really does help keep the dust at bay. So we're going to put the roof scoop as well to one side. That's pretty clean. There's one little speck of dust just there, which we'll get rid of with the wet and dry in a minute. And the spoiler is pretty much spot on. Uh, nothing on that at all. So happy with that. So what we're going to do, we're going to use some uh, micro mesh. So this is ever so slightly cotton backed wet and dry paper. Uh, you can get this on eBay. If I can find a link, I'll pop it in the description for you. And um, we're going to use 8,000 and 12,000 grade. It's marked as 800 and 1,200 on the sheet. Uh, use it wet. Always use it wet. That is the idea of it. So we've got a little tray. We've got some H2O. Put a quick splash in. And I'm going to grab a sheet of our 8,000 to begin with. And just give it a little soak in the water for a few seconds. So, what we're going to do, uh, we've also got some kitchen towel as well. What we're going to do is we're going to go all over the car with very light pressure, hardly anything at all, just light finger pressure. And we're going to take back the shine that we've already got. And what this will do, this will take off any high spots, it'll flat the paint, get rid of any orange peel, so on and so forth. So, as you can see, with the nicely wetted, wet and dry, we're applying ever so light finger pressure, basically letting the paper do the work. And then we're going to systematically go around the entire car and just flat the paint. Don't press too hard. Certainly don't go over the edges too much. Paint always applies thinner on edges. And if you do that, you stand a good chance of burning through and ruining your paint job. Fold the paper over like we did when we were uh, sanding the primer to get into all those little ridges. Make sure you get all the little angles. Try and sand in one direction if you can. This keeps everything even. And like I say, it's a case of going all over the car, systematically getting every corner, nook and cranny. I go over a couple of times, and like I say, there's barely any pressure there at all. Just be careful of ridges there on the wheel arches, around the lower arches, top of the doors, bottom of the sills, so on and so forth. Anywhere there's an edge, the paint will always be thinner, just by the nature of how it lays down. And it's boring, it's, it's monotonous, and this step is going to take about an hour. Uh, I'm going to cut through and speed some of the sections up, because otherwise you'll be here watching me do this all day. But just make sure you get all the areas, 
and don't press too hard. So we're on to the 12,000 now. This is a very, very fine grade of paper. As we've gone around with the, uh, the 8,000, we've dried it off with that kitchen towel to remove any contaminants and then wet the paper again. Wetting the paper not only stops the paper from clogging up with sand and dust, but it also helps eliminate some of the scratches involved with sand in too. And again, systematically all around the car until you are done. Now, we've polished all the car with the, uh, sorry, we've sanded all the car with the micro mesh, and now we're gonna use some compounds. So I've got the Novus, we've got number three heavy, and number two fine. We don't need a heavy in this case, it's not that bad. So we're gonna come in with the number two, and lightly polish up where we've just sanded back, and bring some of that shine back. You can get the Novus polishes on eBay. Again, if you can find the link, I'll pop it in the description down below. And the best thing to use for polishing is cut up old cotton t-shirts. So cut them into squares. Again, we're gonna polish wet, because it works better that way. And when we're done, we're gonna come back with the Tamiya Finish Compound, which I've only got a little bit of, just enough to finish this car. And uh, The Tamiya Compound is a bit of a pain to get a hold of in the UK. Uh, the Novus is a lot easier to find, but the problem is, and a few of us have found out, the Tamiya are in between the Novus um, so the Novus Red Fine Polisher is like a step behind the Finish Tamiya, and the Tamiya Fine um, is in between this and the Heavy. So you can use them all together should you wish, but you don't really need to. Doing it this way is just fine. Apply a little amount onto your wet cloth, uh, cloth. and again, we're going to systematically go all over the car, and again, be wary of any edges or raised parts, not applying too much pressure. We are just lightly buffing it all over, keeping the uh, cloth wet. And we're going to systematically go around the entire car, just polishing it up. What this will do, this will polish up where we just sanded it back, bring some of the shine back, and then once we use that finishing compound from Tamiya, that should really bring our shine back for us. So again, laborious, a bit boring, and you've got to pay attention to what you're doing. Um, please be aware of the edges. It's so easy to burn through. Uh, don't be pressing on it like uh, your life depends on it. It doesn't need a lot of pressure. Just like polishing your car at home, but on a much, much smaller scale. Okay, once you've been around the entire vehicle, uh, use a different cloth, nice dry one this time. And we're going to remove all the polish that we put on. So this will buff it up. And it will start to give it a bit of a shine. Uh, once we've done the polish, we will wax it. Obviously, the difference with polishes, polish actually polishes. Um, it's got cutting compounds in. That lightly abrades the surface. And wax is just a protectant sealer. A lot of people get confused by that. What we're doing there is we're getting to all the little nooks and crannies, making sure we get rid of any excess polish. But we'll deal with that in a minute, and I'll show you my quick and easy way of getting rid of that. So we're just going to go around the entire body, buff it all up. Like I say, if you see any excess pol uh, polish, get rid of it. Like you see in the sill uh, window uh, gutters, around any edges, and just pay attention to get a nice high shine. Now we're onto the Tamiya finish compound. You see, this is a well used uh, tube. There's hardly anything left. There should just be enough in there to do this car. Exactly the same step as before, using a different cloth. You are going to go through a few. And give it a nice polish up. Again, exactly the same as before. No pressure. Let the uh, cloth and the polish do the work. Just apply ever such a slight pressure. No, sorry, I'm saying no pressure. Just slight pressure. And again, be aware of your edges. And just be nice and careful. This will really bring the shine back now. And it'll start to look absolutely fantastic again. So there we go. We're going all around with the Tamiya Fine Finishing Compound. Sorry, not the Finishing Compound, not the Fine. And we're just going to give it a buff up again. Again, another clean cloth. So there's four cloths used. Make sure to get rid of as much as you can. 
and again just pay particular attention to any excess and get rid of it like i say it's not detrimental i'll show you a next oh, step to get rid of it next so there we go we're over in the spray booth now and we've polished up all the body we've got a nice shine on there now as you can see but what we have got because it's been left for a little bit is dried polish in some of the panel lines as you see there on the side of the bonnet or the hood we've got a soft toothbrush and we're just going to get in there and get rid of any bits of it i find a softer brush is better it's an old toothbrush of my little boys i repurposed them because they work fantastic and again just go all around the body all the nooks and crannies getting rid of any excess polish you can see and as you can see it does get rid of it very handily and it's a step well worth taking nothing worse than finishing off a car, polishing it all up, give it a wax, get it all together, and you see dried, crusty polish in some of the panel lines. Like I say, it takes about five minutes to do this. It's a nice quick step. So it's time well spent. Now we've got some water and the UMP Apex. And what we're going to do is use this as a little jet wash. And hose off any excess um, polish that we couldn't get with the brush. And I find it's a nice little step just to ensure we are fully clean. So we're about 20 psi. Don't go in too close. About an inch away will do. And use the pressure of the air and water to gently remove any excess polish in the door handles, door shuts, anywhere where the brush couldn't quite reach. And just take your time and go around. It's well worth doing. It takes a few minutes and really does make a difference. Make sure you also get the spoiler and the boot lid as well as you can see. And then once we're done, we lay the body down, just using air. We'll now blow off all the excess water onto the kitchen towel below. And this will aid us in the drying process. Okay, once we've got most of the water off with the airbrush, we've got some kitchen towel, kitchen roll, and we start to get rid of all the excess. Get rid of it from inside first. Because it's sod law. If you're going to blow anything out. It'll come off from inside. Oh my god. Here we get. And then once you go all the inside. Go to the outside. Be gentle with the kitchen paper. It is a bit abrasive. So don't go mental with it. Just use some very light pressure. There shouldn't be much water left. The airbrush will have taken care of most of it. And we're just going to dry it off. Because we've got some masking to do next. And we want the body nice and dry. But as you can see, we've got a really nice shine there. That Subaru uh, blue is really starting to pop. And the 2K is looking absolutely fantastic. So while it, you know you can get away with leaving the gun finish, giving her a polish and a wet sand back is worth it. Okay, so window rubbers. This is what we're going to do. All the black work shown there. So we've got the sides, the front, over the top of the uh, gutters, and the back window too. Now, a lot of people seem to have trouble doing this. It's really simple. It just takes a time, and it's really boring. So, best job for it, thin masking tape. I like the Azu tape. Yes, we sell at umpretail.com. We've got 0 0.4, 0 0.7, 1mm, 2mm, and 2.5mm as well. For this job, we're probably going to use the 0 0.7 and the 2mm, to be honest. Uh, as you can see, I've got my masking tapes there. They're absolutely superb, easily on par with Tamiya tape in quality. Uh, no bleed through, just enough adhesiveness, and really cannot fault the stuff at all. So, clean area again. Make sure you're not putting your mask and tape down to any fluff or dirt, because that will transfer to the body. And what we're going to do is, as you can see, there are demarcations for the window rubbers. We are going to follow those to the best of our ability around the body, and then mask off the rest of the body and spray it black. It's that simple. Uh, like I say, it's laborious more than anything um and again it takes you about ooh, an hour in total to do five minutes to spray of that and 10 seconds 20 seconds to rip it all off so again it's a bit of a thankless job but it's worth it in the end i've tried using marker pens before i've tried brush painting it nothing comes even close to this now on the back of the subaru on what is essentially the c pillar uh there's a curve so there's a couple of ways to approach this. You can either use it in one piece like I'm going to, or you cut it into sections and do it a section at a time, or you can cut it in a section and fold it around. 
So as you can see, I'm put my thumb in place, iron it up, take the tape back off if you're not happy. Put it in place, fold a little bit, press it a bit, fold a little bit, press it a bit until you're happy about where it is. Um, this side was okay. I did a much better job on the other side, so it's low. But as long as you get the rough mark of it, it'll be just fine. Um, now, luckily, uh, we're going to use UMP primer for this, to paint it. And there's two reasons for that. Number one, obviously, it's a fantastic paint. It's a nice satin finish because these rubbers aren't glossy. Um, so that's why I don't mask this up before a 2K. It looks a bit odd, I think. Uh, and secondly, the 2K is pretty impervious to a lot of solutions. So if we do get a little bit of overspray, we can use a little bit of UMP airbrush cleaner on a cotton board to very likely remove any overspray. And that makes life a little bit easier. Also, if we do miss any little bits, you can lightly brush paint it on um, to cover up any mistakes that you make. So as you see, I've got that nearly round there in one piece. Excellent. Well done, Paul. Oh, you must make that up. Go on, you can do it. There we go. So pretty happy with that. Just use our nail to pull it back a little bit if we're not happy. And get it down. And then we'll come back in with another piece and meet up where we joined. So, like I say, it's boring, it's monotonous, but the guides are there to follow. Basically, you can see them. If you look at the instructions, you'll see the part it's asking you to do, and it's pretty straightforward. Using this tape helps immensely. I have no idea what I did before we had Azu tape. Uh, it must have been an absolute struggle with, like, Tamiya 6mm tapes, cutting it to size, or trying to bodge it. But trust me, brush painting it or using a marker pen, it doesn't look great. This is the best way to do it. And I would definitely recommend doing it after you have glossed because it looks better as a different non-gloss finish on the body. So just take your time. Be aware that when you're handling the car like this, those uh, A-pillars, they're not delicate, but they do bend. Um, obviously, the nature of 2K, if you bend it too far, it's going to crack because it is a hard finish. So just bear that in mind. Obviously, be aware of what's on your fingers uh, at all times at these stages now. Make sure you've got no CA glue, uh, polish left still, or if you've been eating crisps or biscuits, you've got no rubbish left on your fingers, because uh, it will all transfer over to the car body, and we don't want that. So there we go. There's one complete side window done. Just put another piece in there, and that is all done. We have moved on to the side, and we've got to go around the body, get the whole thing done. I've sped this little bit up, because otherwise it's boring as hell. Um, I think there's about 20 minutes of footage here, condensed into a couple. So you can see the time it does take to do, but it's time well spent.
Right, so all the outline of the windows is done now, as you will see in a second, all covered up. So what we're going to do now, we're going to use two, some of the 2mm tape and apply this to the edge of every piece we've added. Um, this will give us a bigger piece of masking tape to attach um, our 6mm tape to in a minute because the thin 0.7mm is quite thin, but we're using that to conform it around the area. So just again, we're going to go around the entire part with just masked with the 2mm and join up to it with uh, the 2mm tape. Okay, so the 2mm tape's all applied. I started to apply 6mm tape, then ran out. So that's what we're using, using the Tamiya 6mm tape. And we're going to do exactly the same again. We're going to apply it to each piece of the 2mm tape we've just attached. So basically, we've graduated from thin to thicker tape. Uh, and you'll see why in a minute. So detach the tape, uh, put it on the palm of your hand, your forehead, your arm, whatever, anything that's not massively hairy. So if you're a werewolf, use a different part of your body. Um, and what that does, it takes a little bit of the stickiness off the tape. The Tamiya tape isn't overly sticky, and the 2K clear is pretty reliable, but rather err on the uh, side of caution than take a risk. Um, I like to use, as you see, my palm and my finger, or if it's a particularly large part, I will use my forehead. Be aware, make sure no neighbors looking through the window and you start sticking tape to your forehead, uh, otherwise you'll get some very strange looks the next time you see them. As you can see, we go around the entire car, um, and we're just onto the roof now. Now we are going to mask the roof in just full masking tape. Uh, as you can see, we've joined up to our two mil near enough all the way around now. And I will approach something as well. My little holder is a 3D printed holder. A friend did for me. Um, they are not available as such, but never say never. Um, but that's what it is. It's a 3D printed tape holder. And yes, it's very handy and very cool as well. So that's a six mil done. We've now got some 80 millimeter tape. Be especially careful this stuff because it's a larger surface area. Uh, you only really need to stick it to the edges of the tape. It doesn't need fully stick into the body. But we're just going to cover it. A little bit out of shot, I do apologize. But all we're doing is filling up that roof space and making sure we have got it fully covered. Now, if you haven't used 2K, Please be aware that some of these clear coats are not as resilient as 2K clear. Um, Aquagloss, uh, X22 and the GX100, they're not bad at all, but just be aware with masking, it's going to take a little bit more care. So there we go. That is all done. I'm going to put my tapes away and we're going to move on to the next step, which is masking the rest of the body. You could use tape if you wish, but I've got a much easier way. So as you can see, we've got some uh, wrapping film or cling film as we call it in the UK or saran wrap I believe it's called in the USA and this is uh, clear film used for wrapping up food uh, and so on and so forth so what we're going to do uh, I'm just going to cut it nice and neat because I've got a real straggly edge where I was pulling bits off the other day we're going to roll it out on the bench we're going to cut a nice section off as you can see I've got my Ulfa rotary cutter these things are about £6 you can get them on Amazon Prime uh, or eBay or what have you. There you go. It's a rotary cutter with a razor sharp blade on it. And you just run it down the edge. I'm out of shot, unfortunately. But trust me, you just run it down the edge and it gives you a real neat cut. We're then going to fold uh, that in half lengthways. We will then cut it into sections required, add some masking tape, and use this to mask off all the areas of the car we don't want to paint. So we'll grab the rotary cutter again. And we'll cut it to size, just even off the edge. There we go. Pick the size you want, which is roughly, I think it's about 10 inches. I know we do, 8 to 10 inches. There we are. And then we grab some uh, 12 mil Tamiya tape, sorry, 10 mil Tamiya tape. And just lightly apply it to the edge evenly with an even overhang. And we grab that, take it over. And apply it to our six millimeter tape, which was the reason for applying that in the first place. Of course, you could skip the six mil tape part if you want. I just find it easier. And away we go. We put right up to where we've already masked, and then fold it underneath the body. And this saves a lot of work. Of course, you could just mask the entire car, but it's a waste of tape. You run more risk of pulling off paint, and it's just an easier way of doing it. It really is. It's cheaper. A roll of this is not expensive. It lasts a long, long time. 
and it's a quick way of doing it. Just make sure you cover all the areas and that you get it exactly where you want it. There we go, all masked off now nicely. As you can see, it says a lot of masking tape. I'm just going to make sure we cover all those areas, and there we go. All the exposed areas ready to paint are there now. I'm just going to make sure that the tape is all fully burnished down, all over the body, and then we can go to the spray booth and paint it. But there you go, quick, easy way of masking, cheap, saves on the tape, and saves any hassle. Okay, over in the spray booth now. Quick final inspection to make sure we're all happy we're all covered. And it looks to be just fine. As I say, just make sure all the tape is burnished down. There's no gaps or what have you. Uh, but like I say, if you do get a little bit of overspray, it's not the end of the world, so I'll show you. So using UMP Normal Black Primer, give it a real good shake up. And I'm going to use our UMP Apex Airbrush. And lightly apply several coats of the uh, primer. And uh, that will give us our window rubber colour. So here we go, there's our Apex. Again, we're about 25 PSI now, because we're using a primer, we've upped the pressure a little bit. Quick test spray, no problem at all. And a very, very light coat. You do not want to flood this, because all it will do is it will wet the tape, and you stand a good chance of getting some bleed through then. So just light coats. By the time you work your way around one part and come back, the first part you've worked on is usually just about dry anyway. So as you can see, we've got both side windows, front and rear window, and there's a gutter that runs right over the top of the car as well. It's a case of just systematically, again, all around the car, making sure to get all the angles. Now, you also need to spray directly down and in on the windows slightly as well to get the inner edges of the windows too. Like I say, on the real car, these things are rubber. So that's the look we're going for with this. Again, just take your time, build up the coat, don't flood it on. The primer is very, very forgiving, but any tape, once you saturate it, it'll either start to lift or it will allow bleed through. And all that does, it means we've got to spend time cleaning it up later on. So we can reduce the chance of that. It's a quicker build, a neater build, and it looks a lot better too. So there we go. We're mostly covered. Have a good look around. Make sure you've got no bits you've left exposed blue. Like I say, get the angles. Make sure you get the inner edges of the windows too. Have a good look around. Make sure you're happy with it. And once you are, sit it to one side and let it dry. Don't forget to clean your airbrush. And away we go. Okay, so there we go. This is a couple of minutes after we finished spraying. Uh, I like to get the paint, uh, tape off before the paint is fully dried. Um, that way, I tend to lose less paint to be peeling or pulling away. Now, like I said before, it takes forever to apply, seconds to remove, and a couple of minutes to paint. It really is that quick. As you can see, using the uh, cling film saran wrap really saves a lot of time. It makes it a lot quicker and works very well. So, pick a point where you can start picking at it. Take the 6mm off first, then the 2mm, and then the 0 0.7. And just work your way around. Just be aware when you pull the tape off, take your time, pull it towards yourself, not on a funny angle, and uh, you shouldn't really have any problems at all. And just work your way around, take it off. Obviously, beware, don't put your fingers in the paint. And as you can see, tweezers are a handy implement. Just be aware your clear coat and just take your time. It's a step that's well worth doing. It looks really good if you get it right. And like I say, there are ways to remedy it should you have any problems. Um, but doing it this way and doing it the right way first time round is worth doing. The more you do it, the better you'll get. It's just one of those things. But using the likes of the Azu tape, uh, the Tamiya tape, both good quality tapes, 
and the cling film does make life a lot easier. And there we are. Okay, there we go. There's all the tape off and all the cling film. You may see some residue left behind, which we'll get off in a minute, uh, from either the tape or the cling film. And be aware of applying the cling film to decals that aren't protected by clear coat. It can pull them off, as Graham found out, uh, my buddy Graham. Uh, I never knew that, but I do now. Um, so just be aware. So we've got a little bit of overspray in a couple of places. So you're going to take some UMP airbrush cleaner and a cotton bud or Q-tip, depending on where you are in the world. And as the 2K is pretty impervious to a lot of stuff, you can lightly rub over and remove any of the overspray. So what that is, it's either where the tape hasn't quite uh, sealed properly, where I've applied tape to tape, um, or it's where we've just gone over a little bit in places. So it's a light bit of overspray, and all you need is a light touch with the wet side, a wipe over the dry, and it's done. It's quick, it's simple. And it's easy. Obviously, don't get it on anywhere you don't want to remove because it will take it off in seconds. And there we go. We are done. What I'll then do is grab another one of our soft cloths. And don't go right up to where you just masked because the, the paint is still uh, drying. I'm just going to buff it up to get any residue off from the tape or the cling film. And give it a polish up. Once we get our wax on at the end, that'll give it a real high shine. As you can see there, we've got a nice shine there. Very happy with that. Really do love that Pro Range 2K. If you've not seen the 2K video, I think it's part four. Go and have a look. Uh, depending on the clear coat you use, that stuff will blow your mind. It's fantastic. As you can see, we get a nice buff up all over, just with the tape spin, because it will leave a sticky residue behind. But just be aware of where you just painted, because there's nothing worse than taking all that time and then go and lose a bit by being a bit ham fisted. Okay, there we go, all polished back up. It's looking good. You can see those window rubbers look really good and I'm very happy with that. So, next step for us are the inner windows. As you can see, all the black marks need to be painted black. Luckily, Tamiya supplies a nice pre-cut mask set for this, which is very handy. Trust me, when you don't get them, you will really want one. Um, so, we're going to remove the clear parts from the sprue. Now, a tip I used years ago, and I've not used for a long time, that somebody reminded me of in one of the comments a while back, I can't remember who you are, if you are, step forward and announce, um, is using a hot knife to remove the clear parts from the sprues. Now, we all know if you use cutters next to um, a clear part, it'll stress the plastic. There you go, I've got a candle. It'll stress the plastic and leave white marks behind. If you heat up a nice craft knife like this, there's an X-Acto knife, and allow the heat and the blade to cut through. You get a nice clean cut that leaves no real damage to the plastic and it's a lot better. It's a tip I used years ago, completely forgot about and was reminded of uh, a week or so ago by somebody who left a comment. So thank you, whoever that was. And as you can see, chop through, dead easy, put it back in and away we go. Now, bear in mind if you have a Tamiya knife or one of the other knives that has a plastic collet, don't do this because it will melt the blade in the knife. And how do I know? Because I did it. Uh, so I've got an X-Acto knife I've had for years. And as you can see, there we go. Dead easy, dead quick, and it leaves no stress fractures to the clear parts whatsoever. Beautiful. So thank you very much to whoever that was that reminded me about that tip. Much appreciated. So candle out the way. Obviously, beware of the hot wax, unless you're into that kind of thing. And what we're going to do now is use a pre-cut mass set and uh, apply it on the inside of the windows. Now, 90% of the time we go on the inside, sometimes we go on the outside. Look at your kit instructions, that will tell you. So, the parts are labeled, the masks are labeled. A is for the front screen. I will put it in completely the wrong part on the glass, as you'll see in a second, then realize and move it along. Now, like the seat belts, <laughs> and I'm not so lucky today, this is something you'll either get in place first time round, or you're going to be removing it and putting it back on and off dozens of times. As I'm about to do off camera. So, get the corners in place first. Get one corner in place. Then line up one of the top edges. So as you can see, I've got the bottom piece on in one corner. Pretty much lined up. It does peel back off. 
but it is paper so just be aware it will rip and it does stretch a little bit too um just take your time get it in place as good as you can if it's not millimeter perfect don't worry um get it to the best place you can and once you're happy where you've got it you might need to remove it several times or a dozen times like i had to uh, to get it in place it literally is one of those things you'll either get it in first place first time or you're going to be doing this for a few minutes ironically the only piece that went on first time round is the very last piece you'll see in a minute so there we go all the parts are on again make sure they're all burnished down properly uh, we don't want any gaps or any uh, edges left exposed because it will seep through now we're going to use ump uh, primer again simply because um it will give a nice satiny gloss finish through the glass um, and it will look uh, like the real deal once we're done. Okay, back in the spray booth, we've got our UMP primer again. As you can tell, it's one of my favorite paints to use. Obviously, it's a top quality paint from a top quality company. Badger. I'm joking, from UMP. So, we're in the apex again. Mind that fingerprints. Look, it was in a place you can't see. So, a lot of these cars, you don't tend to mask the side windows. You do the front uh, and the B pillar on the car covers it because the Subaru is different. There isn't a B pillar on the car. So, there's no real way to hold this other than in your hand. Now, I've got a box full of gloves in the drawer to my left. And for some reason, I don't feel like wearing one today. So, I'm going to spray primer all over my hand as well as the glass so like i say 25 psi nice light coat again building it up not trying to hose it all down in one coat and uh, we want even coverage all the way around it's going to take a few goes around to get it covered and once we're done it'll start to look like this so there you go as you see because we're spraying on the inside i'm using air now to dry off um, because we're spraying on the inside and you've got the glossy uh, plastic exterior it gives that satiny gloss finish um, that you get on the cars in real life. Um, so it's a nice way of doing it. As you can see, I've also got all over my hands as well, which is just great. Uh, who needs gloves when you just get covered in paint? And like I say, we're just using the air now to dry it off all around. As you can see, if I angle it and use the airbrush, hopefully you'll see it dry off. Dries nice and quick. And anywhere else we're not happy with, give it another bit of a coat until we're happy it's done you can of course use black paint or different primer should you wish i just like ump primer because it's nice and reliable there we go all over the windows and all over my hand so back on the bench uh this is near enough dried what we need to do is remove the mask so the best way to do this is use a knife um not this one as i find out because that one's rubbish let's see yeah 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 no i'll try this end hang on wait no, no, that's a crap knife. No, we'll put that away. Let's grab a Tamiya knife. There we go. So, Tamiya knife, much better tool, in my opinion. There we go. We're just going to catch the edge. Beware of the glass. Don't scratch the glass. Um, grab the edge of it. Get the edge of it with the tweezers. And again, pull away from the paint so we don't rip anything away. I don't want to say pull away from the paint. There's no other real way you can pull away, is there? And again, same on the back, using the knife to grab the edge of the tape. And peel it all off. As you can see, we're left with a lovely demarcation of the black and the clear. And we're going to go all the way around until it's all removed. Just take your time, and again, don't stick your finger in it. And if you do get paint all over your hands, as you've seen, I've got most of it off now otherwise it will transfer to everything you handle afterwards okay there we go we're all done uh we grab our cloth a nice clean cloth again i use a lot of these per build and a lot of people ask how i got my windows so clear and it's simply by keeping them clean nice cotton cloth there's nothing on the cloth whatsoever uh, give it a buffer on the outside to remove any residue off your fingers or tape and on the inside being aware of the edges we're just likely removing any residue that's left once it's dried and we've got it installed in the car, we'll give it a final buff up. So there we go. That's it. That's where we're at today. Uh, like I say, we're back in part nine. Hoping that'll be the last part uh, of the actual build. And then we're going to do part 10, I'm hoping, uh, which will be a comparison of this kit and the original one I did. 
and uh, to see what I've improved on over the last, it must be nearly 12 months now, because I built this before Telford last year, uh, see what's changed, what's different, and then a few people have asked about my photography, and like I say, I don't know anything about photography really, only the bits I've picked up here and there, uh, so I'll show my photo booth, my camera, and how I take the pictures, and like I say, not an expert at all, never proclaimed to be, I'm just showing you the way I do things, and if people ask me questions, I'll always try and answer them too. Uh, I'll also talk about flocking as well in the next part. A few people asked about that, and I have done it in the older Subaru. It makes such a mess. I'm still, to this day, finding bits of flock. That's a bit of dust, a bit of dust. Uh, but there's flock still in there. It's terrible. It got everywhere. Uh, there's at least half a dozen cars in that display case with flock in the clear coat. Uh, it just gets everywhere. It looks good. Never using it again. And I won't do a demo on it either. I even did it in the house once. Um, and I didn't do it, I got Hannah to do it, my girlfriend, so I didn't get anything on me, and it was still everywhere, it just gets airborne, and it's everywhere, but I will run through how it's done, and I'll show the seats that I've done in part 10 as well. So there we go. Um, yeah, so hope that was helpful. Like I said, if you've got any questions, pop them in the comments, and I'll try and help. And uh, as always, thanks for watching, and thanks for all the feedback as well. So there we go. Uh, keep an eye out every Tuesday and Saturday for my turds and sucks, uh, my updates, bench updates on my current work. Uh, obviously, there's some reviews due to go up as well, as always, on ISM. Check out the Facebook page and the forum. It's actually a scale model. Come and join us. Sign up. All free. Free content. Great page. Really busy. Busy forum as well. Uh, check out my Paul-ISM Facebook page as well, which has just taken off lately. Shared a few pictures of this around and got loads of likes. So thanks to everyone that's done that as well. Uh, check out the Modern Hangout group for all the off-air hangouts. Live at the Bench page as well for our live show that we do every Friday on this channel, and uh, check out umpretail.com. Uh, some of the products featured today that they use tape and that you can get from us, I'll put the links in the description down below. Uh, myself and Lee run it, and my girlfriend Hannah, uh, partner Hannah, does all our postage as well. So come on over, have a look at our stuff. If you like anything, feel free to buy it. And we're also at Telford as well. If you're Telford, we're in Hall 1, down the back on the left-hand side, and uh, come and say hello. Uh, it's good to meet anybody there. So there we go. So I'll see you next week in part number nine, and uh, we'll hopefully get this thing completed. So thanks for watching. Take care. Bye bye.